Hello everyone, this is Mukto from AMA. I moved you. That's Susan. Hello, Susan. Hi, everybody. Morning, all. This is Joe's from AMI. Good morning, Joe's. Morning, this. So, we have the next. We have Jonas, John, Louise, Susan. Hello. Hi, Jonas. Hey, let's see here. Just need to take some notes. I don't. Oh, Louise is here. Very cool. Uh, Louise, will there be a recording then of this uh, meeting? Do you think? Uh, sure, I'll happy to turn it on as soon as we start, or I can start it right now. Yeah, very good. Uh, it just takes the uh, pressure off to to write notes uh, right now. Right, so. Yeah, I totally agree. Let me see if I can get the recorder to start. Looks like I have to uh, log in with a different login to get the recorder. So just uh, hold on one minute before we start. Okay, I'll, I'll log right back in. Okay. Hey, Jonas, this is Alex. Hey. Hey, listen, um, are we gonna try to doodle a new time for this meeting? Because this one is really tough. Um, yeah, I, I didn't do that the first week. I got a notification from John, right? Leung, that that would be a good idea. Yeah. I, I would do that for the TSC. Uh, and I, I wanted to see, uh, yes, yeah, so we find a good slot. This is not good. I mean, I, I just used the same, like I indicated in last meeting, TSC meeting, I just used the same slot a different day. Um, yeah, post Friday, but you had some reservations there. And I think well, you know, we can do it on Friday as long as you know we do it early enough. We can, if we do it around seven, let's say, right? You yeah, know, let, let me send not a gonna be, not gonna gonna be too, look too, too bad. I'll let Martin chime in if that's too much. Um, but I think Raffle would be able to, to join because we have an, an internal meeting at eight and he joins that meeting. So our guys would be okay, I think, if we do it. Okay. Early. Yeah, <laughs> let me send out this uh, dual thing. I, I just got myself an account there, so I'll do that. Mm. And I was thinking today, uh, so um, Alex, do you know, uh, what are the rules for actually voting? We don't have all the TSC guys. I, I've been reaching out to people individually, but from what I can see now- Well, we technically, have... I think we want to have the, the, the companies that are officially participating, right? Present so we can take a vote. We, you know, the quorum is a simple majority, I think, so- um, but we can't so, get them all, I think. That's the problem, right? Yeah, but... Um, but if we have a majority, then... I even, think uh, I mean, that, we've got uh, AMI, we've got Intel, we've got... Um, we've got uh, HP, HP, obviously. Um, so that leaves just, you know, uh, I think um, Tieto is not every, here. Yeah, yeah I, I checked with Daniel yesterday and Mar Marcy, and he, he was going to ping him... Uh, yeah. I don't see him here. Then also Kubernetes, uh, Kubematic. Um, yes. Bill, Bill seemed to have left. So we need, so they need to come up with a new alternative, I guess. Sebastian, I, I couldn't uh, get hold of, so. Okay, it may be that they're doing things, but, uh, um, but yeah, I can ping them too and see what's going on. Yeah, so, so let me send out this doodle thing but i think for for today i think it's still so we have actually enough if we reach 100 percent of agreement 
we have a majority of TSC, but I, I, I think we should jump in and do the discussions with uh, about uh, specifically the composition service contribution because that has been kind of idling or along for a couple of weeks now and it's uh something that we need to get going and then uh, i also wanted to also because the bnc simulator is there but it doesn't say that it has been approved uh so if we if we didn't do that i think we should just go ahead and, and approve that we, we should talk mm. about it obviously yeah. we also need to time box it a little bit because we have an hour let's 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 talk about the composition service at least till I would say 30 minutes in, and hopefully we have a conclusion then, uh, and then we can move on to the BMC simulator. Make sure we get that approved. I don't see any issues there, to be honest. Uh, uh, there is the Dell server community plugin that um, that we also wanted to to discuss a little bit. But uh, is is that a good uh, and then, then actually, in the end, we Martin put Martin. Did you put in the the Cisco APIC control plugin? I think I did. Yeah. Yeah, I think you did. So that's another uh, plugin for a different type of fabric manager that is very well deployed in specifically telco networks. That yeah. is proposed, but um, so that, so so if we if just go in that order. And if you feel it's okay that we vote, then uh, if we get the majority, then that's fine. If we don't, we push it out. Otherwise, we can just have the discussions and log the conclusions, and then we vote when we have a bigger portion of the TSC present. Yeah. Um, well, let's see how today goes. Um, yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. So let's see if I can summarize the composition service concerns that we had earlier. I, I think the, the, the reason it, it became, so there are a couple of things here, right? There is the whole discussion going on in the, in the composition task force. Uh, and there was a couple of use cases brought forward. Uh, for instance, can you upgrade server servers and other resources that have that have already been reserved or being using mm. in, a, in a composition scenario. So that was one thing. There is also the fact that the composition service will be implemented in a different language. And because of that, it will be more of a standalone service that uh, uh, will exist outside the current stack. And that sort of puts some uh, questions forward, like, for instance, if that service needs to issue things like um, a task and, and, and these type of things, would that be uh, would that be something that we had to have a sidecar load or, or something, uh, or uh, could we do it in some other way? There is also potential use of the the event message bus, which already has like external interfaces, obviously because it's just regular Kafka for now. So those are some of the questions. Um, and I, I, I guess uh, my initial understanding of the composition service, if we turn the clock back some six months ago or something, or perhaps even a year, was that, was that it will exist on top of uh, an aggregator in that, uh, you know, uh, it will sit and, and obviously use the aggregator's interfaces, but it might be on top and and but that's an implementation that's, detail, right? And so we need to be not, very... It's not really, because if, if you put down a requirement saying that those shall not be able to reset servers that are part of a composition, then um, the aggregation and the uh, service will need to know about what's part of a composition uh, or not. And um, I, you could argue that, you know... <laughs> You can ask the composition service before you start resetting servers. Just like if you're yeah, but I mean, a Unix I, file system, you can do an R minus RF on, on root if you I, have I the power and are stupid enough, right? Yeah, I understand all this, but if I look towards, you know, if I if I look at it in terms of, you know, if I put my IT hat on, the actual end user of this, um, 
I don't necessarily want to treat composed hardware this, you know, differently from non-composed hardware. In fact, if you look at the way the industry is evolving, right, a disaggregated infrastructure is becoming kind of popular, right? And so I think, uh, I think in the future, there will be products and offerings and ideas coming down the pipe from different companies that may not, you know, require this hierarchy or may not want to have these limitations, right? Ideally, what I should be able to do is say, look, from an operational perspective, either I have a bunch of servers or I compose them on demand. And then once I've done the composition, they're treated just like any other server. And from that point of view, I want to be able to perform operations on them, uh, get telemetry from them, uh, be able to reconfigure them. And I want to be able to do that on groups as well, right? You know, if I was an IT guy, these are the basic capabilities I would want. That's my, that's my kind of my, my view of, of, of what we need to address, right? And, and the other thing that might happen is I would expect coherence, right? You know, if I, if I have this Odom thing that I purchased from some company as a commercialized distro, let's say, and let's say from HP or from, from another company, right? Um, I would want to be able to, you know, have some level of coherence across the, the, the actual, you know, uh, system of record, right? I shouldn't have to, you know, have 20 different databases that contain different inventories of different components, right? That's just not something that you want to deal with at scale. But that's, um, is that, perhaps that's not relevant to a, a client because he doesn't care where the information is stored as long as he can get to it, right? You're right, but you know, I think you have to look at it in terms of, um, yeah, technically speaking, you're right. It's just the same as saying, you know, something is on top, something is on the bottom. Redfish doesn't define an API hierarchy. All it does is define a flat namespace. And if you look at the spec and you use the spec to implement some client app, you know, there's nothing in the spec that says, you know, this service is above another one, right? I think what, what you see there is basically these interfaces that allow you to compose something, to group something, to, you know, get event notifications from something, um, yeah. but, and control it, right? Obviously, but. So I guess what we, so, so it's one thing to put forward, this is what I want. Uh, uh, as an end user, and I think that's that's very fair because that's a, that's a use case, and, and we should be looking at that. But there there is also the the actual implementation and the architecture. So I guess the reason I started to put poking at do we really know to have need to have this tight integration? Uh, would would an aggregation service return an error if I'm trying to uh, reset? a group of servers and one of those servers are involved in a composition if we can say no you need to better make sure from the composition service before what's involved in a composition or not we could have a less tighter uh, integration between the composition service and the rest of the stack and then the next question is obviously would the composition changes to some composition state or something a result in a, an event uh, like a resource changed event in, in such scenario we will still need to have some integration between the composition service and the event service right yeah and i don't think we need to worry about them being tightly coupled right so i think if we if we treat each one of these services internally as a web service that can be implemented by whatever means is appropriate whatever language bindings you want to use then whatever we do internally to facilitate communication between, you know, say a composition service or uh, an, an aggregation service or something else that will develop in the future, say, you know, next version of discovery or telemetry service, right? Or analytics even that you might want to embed in your hardware or whatever, right? All I'm saying is that, um, to me, we should try to keep the architecture language binding independent and, and from the integration perspective or interoperability perspective, you know, as long as it's based on messages, as long as it's based on an event programming model, I think um, we will be in good shape. 
and we would be yeah. able to support large scale deployments. What and I'm suggesting are... though is yeah. that underneath it all, from an implementation point of view, we may need a persistence service that yeah. you know can can actually keep a coherent model, right? It's like a simom in the old days, remember? Uh I, I, I guess it's just, so even if we say that we should have not the tight coupling, for instance, if if the composition service wants to do things like send out uh, somebody comes in and subscribe to event for change resources, and if the composition service uh, will want to send a, a resource change event if if some composition state has changed there needs to be there need to be an integration between the composition service and the event message bus and and today um, we can see that the event message bus is being used uh, is being implemented by using Kafka and if you come in to to Kafka from another language you will come in with the assumption that it's using Kafka uh, and you will have to design it in a way so you can can talk to Kafka, uh, but we also have a different requirements coming into Odim that we want to shrink the footprint so we can be in a in a more type of an edge use case. And in, th in that requirement, obviously, you want to be able to switch the message bus to something lightweight. And this is okay as long as you are a, a GoLang client because there are GoLang libraries that don't care about the underlining message bus uh, technology but if you are in python uh, uh, such a switch of message bus implementation will lead to a new type of uh, implementation in in the composition service at least part of it will now have to be able to talk to this new uh, message bus technology of choice right so these are the type of actual uh, uh, harsh reality questions that we need to address right yeah well, I think some of these discussions uh, or uh, some of these architectural underpinnings is, is something that we do need to kind of maybe formalize a little bit. Right? Um, to me, just based on previous sort of in, in experience that I have, you know, and again, it's, it's whatever I know, um, Something like Odin will be successful if you can, you know, standardize the interfaces based on Redfish and then have uh, different implementations that can be plugged in for those different interfaces. That's how, you know, somebody could monetize the, the software, right? They could, you know, provide, you know, a, a value add implementation of some set of interfaces. They may also choose not to implement all the interfaces, right? Because in some sense, uh, Odem is kind of like, um, it has two, two, it's like, you know, it's like two sides of a coin, like northbound, it's fairly high level kind of functional interfaces that, that are being defined. And then, you know, southbound, it's all about resource management. And, you know, one could argue that, you know, I may implement, you know, different versions of Odom. We've talked about embedding Odom. We've talked about running it on a separate server. Depending on what I, you know, which way I go, I, I would want to have the flexibility to pick and choose which services I actually plug in or implement. If we well, can, uh, yeah. Yeah, so. I think in this meeting though, I mean, I think these larger higher level directional type of discussions are fine for TSC, but in this meeting where we are looking at proposals and we want to get thumbs up so engineers can start working on it, we have to lift all those dirty little rocks and figure out the details at least enough so we can give a thumbs up or thumbs down and, and well, that's what I'm trying to get to as well, right? But I, what I don't want to see happen is, you know, we pick, we, we, we look at something and say, well, no, obviously it's going to have to be standalone. And then we kind of miss the mark, right? Um, I don't know. I think I mean, that, you, you, I think you guys have more or less answered two of the important questions, but, but by circling around it. I mean, if you want to have a multi, uh, 
multi ecosystem provided uh, mm -hmm. components into Odim, you got a provision for that they can use the message bus that they currently have in their existing part if they want to contribute something existing, so that you have an ability for multiple different message buses over time it is is necessary in the in the model kind of a thing. And the other one would be that if you don't want to have a tight coupling, and, and I don't think you want to, I mean, that's what I hear, then yeah. you've got to ensure that you have a model that enables you to interchange that information you need uh, only when you need it. So the models but, becomes the, the, uh, the tool yeah. of exchange of information in between the different modules or components in there. But then, they right. better, but then they better fit those models good enough. And one of the things that the composition service is doing, it's, it is going multi-client. The multi-client is not simple to say, if you have written your resource aggregator towards being a single client type of environment, uh, and then adapting that to something that is a multi-client, then you get all the security separation kind of concerns that, that the rest of the models sure need to support as well. Yes, and Thomas, I mean, what you said is spot on, right? You want to be able to have model-driven kind of implement architecture and implementation of, of these interfaces that are defined by Redfish. And Redfish defines an information model that can be encoded in whichever way we choose to as, you know, whatever the, uh, you know, using whatever appropriate data model we want. Um, my, you're right, it has to be coherent though, right? Yep. Yep, and, and that, that's what a little bit scared me, what you said. I mean, Redfish today, and, and I know that as well, that Redfish today is a flat namespace. But when you implement a multi-client situation, then it's not flat namespace. Anymore. Yes, then I you agree. have one with level of abstraction. I, that's one of the drawbacks of, of Redfish is that it has no notion of multi-tenancy. And, yes. and that's something that would need to get fixed because I actually don't think that composition service is going to be the only thing that's multi-client. No, I but I mean, neither does the people in Redfish. They only say that we got to have somebody that runs ahead and, and fix the multi-client kind of a thing before we spray it. Uh, yeah, wide. well, yeah. Okay, whatever whatever that will look like. I don't know. So no. if, I, if I read this into is... this, so Thomas, the other thing that I know, I was listening into some of the composition task force discussions, uh, and it seems to me that you guys are not using tasks, you're gonna be using jobs. And, and um, I, I guess if, if that is the case, uh, I don't know, then, then we need no integration on the, on the ta with the task service at least. Um, and, and as far as the message bus goes, we can say to AMI that yeah, please implement uh, something that we'll, we'll use Kafka today but, but probably it's a good idea to be modular so you have an abstraction layer between uh, the message bus usage and the rest of the service because it, will, it might change. Yeah, yes, sure. I, I'm Thomas. not sure how that, how that correlates into using task or jobs. And I'm not sure that uh, the, the composition group have sort of uh, finally said that they would use one and only one. I, think, I mean, they're I currently think, yeah. discussing it. This I'm sorry. A, this is Muthu from AMI. Like uh, our uh, proposal is like kind of like uh, we made it six months uh, old earlier, and uh, our model is following the Intel RSD uh, node composition uh, model. And uh, uh, our but, understanding is that uh, the, the the proposal. Uh, our understanding is that the composition services like sitting on top of the volume and communicates to the volume and collect the information. So the, in problem, our... the problem is that that RSD model was not Redfish compliant. It had, you know, you know, additional extensions that we put in at Intel. And yeah, frankly, we, we need, you need to implement the, the curve. If you want to implement the yes. current uh, Redfish. That's service, what, uh, that's what, that's what I'm requesting. If we, we need to go with the like Redfish, because when that at that time the Redfish composition service was very like uh, old, and uh, we thought to go with this model, and that is what we are proposing here. Uh, as of now, uh, we see that lot of like uh, new changes going on very actively on the Redfish composition. Most of the guys here in this forum are already part of the composition service task force, and we are also actively participating in it. 
it would be good that if the uh, task force here uh, people here to guide uh, on that like if we need to uh, uh, like uh, uh, move forward with the current proposal or uh, we need to uh, ch change our proposal to something like uh, uh, to support uh, the uh, 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 redfish composition service uh, model or something like that yeah absolutely you cannot implement the rsd thing that's that's uh, that's a yeah good. i I would agree. I would advise against it. We ran into a lot of trouble with interoperability issues because of that. You know, when we tried to, for example, integrate RSD with VMware, that was a disaster because, you know, they expected, you know, a set of standard interfaces and what they got was not. And, you know, I think we've kind of said that we would, whatever we do has to be compliant with, with the Redfish spec. So that leaves uh, that leaves the decision basically. Do you want to wait for the current composition task force for that to to make it into a spec or at least firm up before you start developing, or or do you want to do the jump later, right? Yeah. Uh, thanks, uh, Jonas. Uh, that was my next question. Yeah. But I guess the the question when you say if you see composition sitting on top then my first question would be, what do you think is the northbound interface from your composition service and who would sign on to use that? Because then it's not, then it's not part of ODIM anymore if ODIM says we're gonna be using or northbound Redfish APIs. Yeah, but then the it's just a composition tool white that's paper using. has Redfish APIs, right? Yeah, no, uh, but- yes, 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 it does. But if, promises... if, you, if you pose the, viewpoint that it runs on top of ODIM, then you basically say my northbound from the composition service in okay. that runs on top of ODIM is undefined. No, if you say that redfish. it runs as a part, if you say that it well, runs as then, part of ODIM, then it's defined. No, well, Thomas, I, I'm not sure if I agree with that though, right? In, in terms of, you know, the, 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 the composition service that's been defined right now by the DMTF, it does have, you know, through those stanzas, right? You know, in the manifest, a, um, you know, defined JSON um, payloads, right? That you push into the composition service. Um, and, you know, the, those, those are then exercised by the composition service itself. So they are defined northbound interfaces. And so for us to implement the composition service or AMI to do that, that they would obviously need to do those northbound interfaces as well. And again, they would be standards compliant because they're defined by DMTF. Yeah, yeah, but, but I, think, I think my question is more of a philosophical nature. If somebody comes and tells me, first of all, ODIM follows and presents northbound uh, Redfish APIs, but the composition server service views itself as it runs on top of ODIM full stop. Mm -hmm. How should I interpret that? Instead of saying that the composition service is a part of ODIM, exactly. and by that it also presents northbound APIs. Yeah. But it's, that, yeah, that's I think at the end of the day, what, what Thomas is saying, it comes to the whether the, let's say, API exposed by ODIM is intent-based for yeah. the orchestration. Well, no, and, and the the, no, the only really. difference is going to be what port and the URI it's running on, because if you're running inside ODIM, yeah. as ODIM is now, and, and we have, remember, we have not said that ODIM will always be the same. There might be something on top of ODIM as long as it's, it, it implements uh, northbound Redfish APIs. But if you run inside ODIM and you have the same API server, you're obviously going to hit the composition service on the same API server. If you run on top of ODIM, it's going to be a different port or perhaps even a different IP address. Yeah, but what exactly are you, I mean, let's, let's kind of tease composition apart into two parts, right? There is the, the client side of the composition that actually, you know, interacts with the user. But that is not in the proposal. Right. So then I don't understand the, I'm, I'm, this is kind of, I think Thomas just more elegantly made my point, right, as well, because if, if Redfish defines a set of interfaces and we basically agree that each interface or each type of interface within Redfish is implemented, you know, through one of these services, whether it's yeah. aggregation, composition or whatever, 
then it's not on top. It's not, you know, it's just a Nobody bunch. knows if it's on top or the bottom. The, the requirement in redfish is if you hit root, you will get a URI to the composition service and you will get a URI to the aggregation service and, and so on and so forth. If that is on a different server somewhere in a different parallel universe, as long as you can get to it, you're in compliance, right? Sure. If you have an API gateway that knows how to route to, you know, to a sidecar with a whole bunch of microservice instances, yes, you're right. I mean, if we adopt that way of doing things, you're right. No, we, it's just I, my, my point that, is that the spec no, is not forcing you in any direction there. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, Thomas. Yeah, we, we don't need a sidecar if it is outside, isn't it? See, look at yeah. it as like ODIM 1 and 2, where ODIM 1 is implementing the other service and ODIM 2 is only implementing Composer. It might be a different implementation, but the same service model is uh, implemented. But what I don't understand is what does it mean to be outside? We're defining a namespace called ODIM. We're defining a set of interfaces for the box called ODIM. Well, we are what talking we're about the is that it's actually two boxes. You are talking about the vision. We are talking about the implementation. But you know, you don't implement something that you know is never going to scale or, or or work in the long run. I'm sorry, right? You know, what are we doing? I don't know what you're talking about. The, the yeah. proposal on the table is: can we do this in Python? Why not? Yeah. If the communication, the internal communication, can be modified to to use the the message bus of whatever choice we make, why not? Yeah, yeah, and I, I tend to agree, uh, and also. As long as the API gateway can give you, when you get do get on route, can give you a, a route to the composition service, yeah. I think you have no issues. And then there are there are more there are more like technical questions around how do you use the task service? Do you need to use the task service and things of that yeah. nature? But I think all of that can be taken care of. Yeah. The biggest uh, problem, I think, is Jonas. I think we all talk about this implementation details, you know, many times. So I, I would like to understand the problem statement or the goal for today, because the same discussion happened in one of the previous TSCs, exactly the same. So what was the conclusion then, Rafael, if you will? The conclusion was that if you're running the composition service within the ODM array, you can use the, the you know message bus. If you if you use it outside, you are bound to use the API, right? Yeah. There's yeah. no you know again. And, and and regarding the task service itself, the task service is exposed by the service for the no. you know long async operations, right? And no, this it's is not, the task service is not exposed by any service. The task service is is uh, something that is. No, no. So, so, so the groups. response to the re, to to the long lasting request is uh, let's say returned on on the on the response uh, body. You, you got the link to the monitor, uh, you yeah. know, task. Yeah, yeah. I, so I don't think we should worry about the any, task service. But the task service doesn't have any APIs to issue a task. Exactly. It doesn't have any APIs. You don't have to worry about the task service when you talk about two services within the same, you know, gateway. It's just a mechanism that you can, you know, return async operation much sooner. Yeah, I think if I remember right, there's a jobs interface and then the task is something that just kind of happens. Yeah. As a side effect of invocation. Behind the scenes, but, right. No, yes. but, but Rafael, please, please keep me honest here. If we had a conclusion to move ahead and do this in Python and, and for HPE or somebody else provide a, a sidecar uh, API for the task service, then by all means, uh, we, should, we should go in that direction. We shouldn't waste any more time. I just don't remember that conclusion. We didn't need yeah. that. Yeah, we, we didn't, didn't make the conclusion, but we talk about the same point, the data points. The, the so can I, can I try this? I think we've kind of agreed violently that, you know, whatever we do, the interfaces from the composition service need to be in line with the spec, not with the old RSD implementation. I Absolutely. Think Safe Good point. Uh, something what I wanted uh, Alex, to say, Alex, the RSD private, you know, compose not uh, endpoint was defined when the DMTF lacked, you know, any definition. Exactly. And since exactly. then, it's obsolete that it shouldn't be used anymore. Exactly. So then the second thing we might want to say is that, you know, we can treat ODEM, you know, from logically as a, as a federation of services based on a model 
and the the each service within that federation can be implemented whatever language bindings are appropriate or you know whatever is convenient but again the interaction between the services is model driven and you know it, we don't need to worry about top bottom left right it's just you know how you get to a particular service and how that service might invoke other services that could potentially be model driven and happen through some some you know some happen way. through so the, the wanna, APIs or the message bus. conclusions here. So, so I took the first conclusion: composition service needs to align with the Redfish spec. Yes. Then, uh, do you want to do it now or later? That's that's the decision that needs to be made. Yeah. And then, and then you went on a longer. Uh, well, there are two. Let me break it so, down. So, Jonas, Jonas, on, on the previous point, whether you because I know that a my standpoint is they want to use using the RSD. They just want to move from Lua to Python. I'm not sure if it's the right approach in a, in a way that the composition service is much different from the different from the RSD model, right? Yeah, and, so that's why I said it needs to align with the Redfish spec. I think that's the conclusion. Yeah, from our understanding, the new uh, Redfish composition service model is uh, uh, kind of a uh, bit different from the RSG model. Uh, yes, it yeah. is. It, it, yes, it's completely different. That's yeah, why completely. what I'm saying is maybe it doesn't make sense to rewrite RSD, uh, you know, compliant from, from Lua to Python, rather come up with a new one, right? Yeah. In such a case, like if you are for, uh, need to follow the Redfish composition service, uh, like uh, what would be the version of the spec we need to follow? whether the existing uh, composition service uh, uh, schemas are the upcoming uh, like uh, version which is uh, currently a lot of discussions going on so, yeah, so Mutu, I, I think let me start and Jonas can finish because uh, and Jonas and Thomas are actively uh, participating. Yeah. First of all, in terms of the composition service per se, which is uh, based on the let's say on the computer system, uh, I don't think there's major changes. I think the major changes are happening uh, with regards to how to pull the fabrics. Okay. Which is the missing mm. part. Well, so, I'm first, I think Thomas is the more active participant. I'm, I'm just listening in, so it's better that I, I would this beg one. to differ that, that it's only the fabric that differs. I mean, they're going for uh, a multi-client yeah. uh, approach. They're going for that they need to save state and they're going for pulling in the fabric. All of those three are large differences. Okay. But I think we need to kind of, you know, in terms of decisions, right? I think, you know, in terms of inter interface compliance, we've kind of agreed. I think the next decision that needs to be made one way or another is about the level of coherence between when it comes to data exchange between two services, right? Well, the, the question there is actually for for somebody like um, uh, uh, Thomas, because if if you if you if if we go for the new composition service, do you know if that composition service will use jobs or tasks? I think that's still up in the air. Yeah. It, it, yes, well, it's up in the air, uh, but I don't necessarily see why it should be such a big difference because i think that any module within uh, an odin framework i think ought to be capable of selecting if it should use tasks or jobs or both yeah we don't they have serve different purposes i i think um i think the act of composition needs to be considered as an asynchronous thing right because especially if you're going to construct multiples of something right and so you don't know how long it might take to compose something out of the disaggregated components. That could be a long running task that could mm. potentially return back. Now, whatever mechanism is used to accomplish that is something we can, we can talk about, but. Yeah, but that, that is a discussion I think that belongs in the task force and, mm. and we just have to align. If they come out yes, with jobs- Yes, yes, Jonas, but, but I'll give you an example. Jobs. If you're doing that, let's say, if you're creating a new Compose node, if, if it didn't change fundamental, and Thomas can correct me if I'm wrong, you, you post into the collection of computer system with the computer system of type Compose, right? Yes. And there's some you know magic that happens for fabrics, but you are sim simply you're doing the post. Since you're doing the post, you, you, you're calling the API, you will get the task as, a, as a, you know, in the response that you can monitor uh, with the co when the completion happens, right? If you are using jobs, use, use this, you know, the different API, you just create yeah. a job. 
Yeah, what I'm yeah, saying from is that I angle, guess... seeing from that angle, I agree with you, Raphael. But it's all the implicit things that happens under the hood if you're posting a stanza and you're expecting that some part of the stanza is already predefined, meaning that they own state or not. That makes it rather different from before. Okay. Yeah, it is up to the level of uh, granularity or the complexity we are adding to the node composition. For example, if it is a simple selection of uh, like a computer system, it would be like uh, quick. And uh, if we are adding multiple stanzas and other other resource uh, attachments, everything as part of composition, definitely there should be it should be taken care in the background service uh, along with uh, like uh, integration with the task service and other things. But, but, but there I is an elephant in the room here, right? If yeah. if let's address it because it, it might free up some time. Are you, are, does it make any sense to implement the current composition service that is in, in today's DMTF spec while there is uh, active discussions going on to change, make significant changes to it? Uh, if if, you, if the, the answer to that question is no, I think a lot of the other discussions might not need to happen at this point in time. But yeah, I would agree with you that, you know, if, if we choose not to do the existing implementation, some of the stuff can be deferred. However, some of the questions we have are more systemic than, you know, specific to a particular service, right? Um, so, so to me, the coherence question is something that we kind of have to address early on, right? Because it's very fundamental to how things will evolve. I understand how they are now, but how they are now may or may not be what we want in the long run from a, from a scalability and, and heterogeneity uh, of the implementation perspective. I agree with you, Alex. The question I would ask you is, do, do you think that those type of discussions on, on how we want modularity and the architecture to evolve is, is less of a specific proposal type of question or, and more of a a TSC type of... Uh... Well, I mean, my understanding is, and, and this is what uh, David presented last time, to me, this meeting that you called is a subcommittee of the TSC focused on technical and architectural issues. If we can free up the TSC to deal with the, you know, the housekeeping yeah. issues, then, you know, we can have dedicated meetings where we talk about, you know, hard technical problems or, you know... Yeah. Things that... I agree. I agree. Fair, fair point. And I think uh, we will run out of proposals and, and we will be able to address those questions. Uh, yeah. But I and I think they belong in this meeting. I, I agree with you. Yeah. But to, to guide the implementation, whichever way it goes, whether it's based on today interfaces or the next gen interfaces, some of these other fundamental things need to be kind of decided on one way or another so that the implementation can do the right thing. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, 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 and to, uh, I mean, I, I should break this if it was in the middle, but if, if it was me who were guiding the elephant in here, I would <laughs> use the opportunity of that uh, the composition service is going ahead of the pack in Redfish and saying, here yes. we are introducing multi-client, we're introducing states, which is something that uh, if Odin would like to live up to its purpose of trying out and putting requirements into Redfish, it actually ought to jump on that and say, let's see if it's implementable. But with yeah. the notion of that, no, you're not gonna have a product on the market within five to six months. You're gonna have a prototype that proves what went wrong into the composition so you can guide them. We have allowed, uh, I agree with Thomas actually, because we, we have allowed for different kinds of projects, right, in terms of taxonomy. And there's nothing wrong with having a composition service that is, you know, still kind of in evolving state, but at least we would have been able to prove out some of the, some of the things that are not really being thought about in the spec yet. Well, we have as a principle to never implement something that is not in the spec. It will going to have to live in its own uh, uh, branch for a while then. It might. And, and the idea would be to then propose these changes in the spec. 
and we should, you know, it, it should be a, a, a loop, right? You know, this is how open source and standards work well. Open source runs ahead, implements something, proposes the changes, because, you know, this is where we validate the, the actual viability of technical viability. It's easy to write a spec. Well, so you can view it as a pathfinding branch, but, but, but yeah. I mean, I agree yeah. with you that you should probably not release it as this is the released version. But if you want to be part of where Redfish is going, and by that forming your own destiny, then you better have a pathfinding branch as well. Yeah. Is, so, is so there a WIP uh, metadata, WIP model for this new composition, or it's, it's just simply presentations? Presentations. Uh, they, they are doing they are doing modeling and Martin help me what is it called the thing that they are mock implementing mockups yes thanks so they are doing mockups on every meeting and and uh, I mean you know as well as I but I can't tell you but but I mean you know who's driving that and who's going to have a product about it in, in a year's time or something like that. So, yeah yeah we know that too. But that's a good idea. You, you do the if, math. <laughs> so AMI, yeah, exactly. AMI, if you want to go ahead and do the new composition, so it's in a, in a branch, uh, are you also in DMTF? Are you engaged in this workforce or are you more like active listeners? Mostly in the composition task force, uh, uh, we are active listeners on this uh, workforce. Yeah. I think, you know, to me, and, and this is obviously something you need to check yourselves, but I, I think there's enough meat there to get started with it. Um, you know, if you look at the mockups that are there um, and the descriptions, et cetera, uh, you know, and the refinements that are coming out every week and on the calls, um, you know, I think having a serious look at the, the new, you know, evolving service versus the original is probably a better idea to me because they are pretty different to each other. The DMTF site, uh, I couldn't see the, uh, like the work in progress version of the composition service schemas and the mockups. So if somebody can help in sharing that, it will be really great. Uh, you, for you, us. Will, you will not be capable of reading up on anything inside Redfish and try to understand what's behind it. Okay. You've got to be present at the meeting, listen where they go, and, and listen why they say different things. Okay, it's okay. going to be very, very hard to dig into. Well, mm -hmm. At least, I, I agree on, on upcoming stuff. Uh, of course, if it has already been released, they do some Redfish School presentations and things that, that are helpful, I guess. Mm -hmm. But uh, the yeah, other so, thing I wanted so. to ask is, as requirements for future uh architectures and block then uh, if we said that uh, I, there is there is a thing that here that should they all should all services be reached through the same API gateway and and obviously the that will make it easier for northbound client to not have to uh, at least you know uh, reach the root service there and get a path to all the other uh, all the other services and then there is the integration uh, point that that we will need to discuss when a decision is made obviously if you have authenticated on the root service uh, by by calling the by by doing a post to what is it sessions uh, you should be authenticated independently of what service you you pick after that right as long as you have a valid um, token so, so that is also some 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 principle or, or at least guidelines we need to put down because you shouldn't have to authenticate again. I think again when you when go you get... in when you go into a multi. I think. Thomas, did you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think authentication is one thing. If you're if you have a flat namespace and it's a single client, but when you move in multi-client, you also need to move in authorization together with the authentication. Yeah, you have the role concept and things in, in Redfish. I don't know if that is enough for the upcoming composition service, but there might You're need to be... Your... Oh, sorry. Am I breaking up, guys? No, not really. Oh, no, no, you're no. perfectly fine, Jonas. Okay, yeah, I was thinking once the composition service is released and, and will address multi-clients, perhaps there has to be updates to other services in Redfish, like... Mm -hmm. uh, 
profession and, and accounts and these type yeah. of things. I don't. If know. you Absolutely. remember the list, the list of spec changes that we proposed from Intel, multi-tenancy was one of the top things that we thought we should be working on. Can we can we uh, can we uh, move away from this first? I, I just want to. I, I, I want to get to the BMC simulator to so, so get that approved if possible, so we don't have that not being approved. I don't think I, that I was see. very controversial, right? I thought we kind of. I thought we all approved. We just, it just yeah. it was not in the okay. table of the. I, I will. Uh, I will update it then. I. I yeah. I, it's just not on the TEC list, so approved. By the way, as, as we speak about the BMC simulator, I did create the you know child page for it. I provided the, let's say, Excel spreadsheet with the all endpoints and properties that will be part of the BMC simulator. And it's based on the OPAS profile as well as OCP profiles. So if anyone has any, you know, uh, input uh, comments or you know uh, let, let's say want changes please you know just use the confluence page to to come up with the comments on to, or write me directly please uh, before yeah. we move on to the the other uh, topic uh, i would like to understand uh, is there any decision made on the which version of the composition service we need to follow like the current yeah, released sure. version or it's like uh, the upcoming we have to wait till the upcoming release no that is be. that is your decision i think the only decision here is that the composition service needs to align with redfish spec so if you if you make um, so so obviously the redfish version of the composition service is a by is by that rejected. Uh, that is not something that uh, unless unless people feel differently, right? Yeah, I think that's um, a I given. Would, and then yeah, my sense is that you know we should we should not implement something that we know will be not usable in the long run. Yeah. That's a waste of that's a huge waste of resources that could otherwise be working on other things potentially like some of the underpinnings that to make that service as well as other services interoperate better or whatever. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be kind of built in terms of the foundations. But I would not go and implement a set of interfaces we know are going to be obsolete by the time they're done. I agree. And, and, and then the other thing we said, if, if a newer model is adopted that is not yet in the spec, that is more following the discussions in the, in the task force, it will have to live in its own uh, uh, branch till, till we get spec approval is, is what I was proposing. I didn't hear any, any other viewpoints there. So I guess that's a very weak, it's not even a decision. Any, any thoughts there? I, I think we have said as a principle, we should only implement stuff that is in the Redfish spec earlier, so. Yeah. Okay, yeah, got it, thank you. And then I think the other thing is that standalone uh, in a different language is okay. I, I think uh, we just need to work out how we use each other's services and, and that can happen. Yeah, we should the define the, you know, the control points or you know, interactions in terms of the model and um, message path, which can also be used for event sourcing. So you can, you can, I think as an inspiration, right? And maybe this is going a little bit too far, but let me throw this, uh, let me throw this out. There's already an existing kind of meta model for how systems like these need to be implemented. And that meta model and that sort of, you know, you know, that, that, that sort of approach has been documented as part of 3GPP SA5 spec. So if you go there and you look at, you know, what that, you know, what that spec defines, it in essence defines a collection of services that expose endpoints based on some definition. There is a model for how they interact. There is a model for how they leverage each other. There's a model for how multiple different implementations might be done for a given service. All of that is at least at the high level is specified there. It might be worth a look. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so this way we don't have to invent anything new. We can simply say, look, uh, at least for the telecom world, that spec is going to be used uh, one way or another. And so we just, uh, you know, get inspired by it and do something similar here. 
Yep, we can look at that and definitely have discussions. That might be what we're looking for. Uh, the other thing we said is that at least we need to get to the service via the APA uh, gateway. Uh, I, I think uh, we basically didn't agree on that, but uh, we need to reach it through the root uh, service at least. And then I, I guess um, well, we can everything. Simply, yeah, yeah. We could okay. simply say that from an implementation perspective, you know, all API invocations are going to go to one port, one, you know, one IP address, right? That's it. Yeah. How it, what happens after that is inside the box. Exactly. Yeah. So that that's, I think that's a good principle as well. So a client doesn't have to uh, have yeah. access to, yeah. And then, so I will document this and, and, and we can we can have that up on the web page and, and then we do the formal vote uh, next week or something. Okay. Uh, because I don't wanna I don't wanna just put a finger in the air and see I didn't hear any any anybody protest and and I was decided. So let's do that formally. But however, as far as the there is the next one, uh, the BMC simulator we already proved earlier, so no worries. We just need to update the web page. I will do that. The Redfish support for data center fabrics, that's a, a document. Martin, I know you had a session with, uh, with some different individuals on this topic. It's your paper. Where are we on that? Is that something we can vote on or? Yeah, no, it's, so I had a good discussion with Thomas um, earlier and um, I think we agreed on an approach whereby we'd split the document. Uh, well, actually, I would split the document. Uh, I had a lot of comments as well from uh, from his team as well. So, um, mm -hmm. there's, bottom line, there's quite a bit of work to do on it now. Um, so, it's not ready to be brought back in for voting on. So, let's just put that one on pause, please. So, should I remove it or should I, I, I put on hold or something? In just the... put it on hold, please. Okay on hold okay and then the next thing was the dell server community plugin and here um we are looking for two things first out generally we have a redfish uh, plugin today that is uh, open source and that can do a lot of things and we have been playing with uh, some of the dell servers and there is there is actually not a whole lot of work that is required there is some work required for uh, some storage operation. There, there are also some information that we have seen missing in, in events, uh, namely the original, what is it called, uh, Barat? Uh, origin source, origin? Ah. If there is, there is a, a, a property that needs to be there. Barat, do you know what it's called? Origin of condition. Origin of condition, so that you can point to who, what resource actually uh, emitted the event, but generally the idea here is to to take this Redfish uh, generic plugin, uh, copy it over to a new uh, branch, and and call it the the Dell uh, server plugin, and then we need to enhance it so that in some cases we probably need to look at Dell's uh, OEM section of their Redfish implementation to to do mapping to some properties over then, and obviously this will look. I think that, that that is the approach. It will look much better if somebody else than HPE did that. <laughs> so, if we have any any volunteers, uh, here I think Dell future, would be ideal. Dell <laughs> would be the absolute best. But um, we have some issues with luring them into this little uh, uh, gathering. So that's the issue. But uh, do you guys see? Are we ready to vote on this? That this could be a good uh, uh, contribution by somebody into a new plugin and um, it's going to be open source and, and obviously it, if if um, anybody can help out and, and make it a better one uh, it won't be a production type of creation that's more for uh, for somebody else than to, mm -hmm. to take it and, and turn it into that but at least we can get we can get some interoperability uh, proof of, of concepts from from just uh, downloading or cloning the, the project, right? Yeah. Gets my vote. Yeah. With me on, on the meeting, you're not allowed to vote, Martin, but uh, <laughs> any, 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 well, any concerns first? I think we, we push this as well till we have the next week's uh, meeting and, and we get all of the T TSC in. 
but are there any concerns from anybody, even the guys who do not have uh, voting power, do you have any input here? Do you see any issues? Uh, do you think that Dell might get pissed off? I mean, that's uh, that's besides the point, I guess, but it's, it's, it's something that... I, I, um, I don't necessarily think that they will be pissed off, no, and I, I do think it's good to put something out there as well. Mm. Yeah. Agreed. As long as we do it with good intentions, right? This is not yeah. about dragging anybody in the dirt. It's it's more no. like, yeah, well, let's... No, let's it's, it's to do exactly what the project intends, which is interop, right? Yeah. Yep. So. Okay. So I will I will write that in the minutes as well, and we can we can do the vote formal vote next time. Uh, I think we're on top of the hour, so let's. One, we only have. So you know, yeah. so once we have this PMC simulator done, we can also have some flavor of simulator with the Dell, right? And to yeah. use for the right. development and and interoperability of this Dell plugin. Yep, exactly. No, that's going to be huge once we get that one. Where is it? <laughs> Sorry, uh, but no, that's that's great. But in, right, in terms guys. of the, you know, okay. Let's talk then next week about this little plugin. So before we go, Thomas, I had that question for you. Like, can you please tell the TSG sure. work group where the you know you talked about intercommunication between various instances, right? Uh, I didn't understand the question. There. Did you want you, me to stay on wait. so we can talk about it, or did you want some special information? No, just one question. That or uh, is it okay if I mail you? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, thanks. I, I can stay on here as well if you want to take that just after the meeting. If it, yeah, so when we're discussing about, you know, whether the uh, plugin goes in, uh, sorry, the composition goes into uh, ODIM or uh, be able to talk separately, you said that uh, the 3GPP TSG is covering this aspect. So I just was wondering which is that work group uh, so I can look it up. Yeah, they they basically cover management architecture, right? And SA5, and that's a good model to start with, maybe. We oh, that's a, the work group five, is it? The telecom management. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot. I can forward a copy of the spec. I'm not sure if I have the latest version, but you know, I can at least give you the number. Yeah, that will be really great. Maybe you can circle that around to me as well, Alex, because I, I wouldn't have been able to answer that myself. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I mean, if it's good for, for you at IMI to look at, uh, then it's probably good for us that are in the composition service as well. That's yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay, hey guys. All right. I got to go, guys. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. everyone. Yeah. Thank Bye. you all. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everybody.